Hello everyone. Welcome to See the Invisible, Living with an Invisible or Rare Disease. My name is Rhonda Franny Jefferson, and thank you so much for taking time to listen today. If you're new to this podcast, welcome. I hope that you enjoy the podcast, and I'm just hoping to lend some support or a voice to those who do have an illness, as well as to their caregivers. Now, I have been going over the subject of asthma over the past few episodes, and I have to say I'm actually surprised that I didn't know as much about asthma as I've been learning. I do have asthma, yet I just really looked at it as, okay, it's something you have, you have to live with it. And while that's true, I didn't really take the time to learn more about it. and. I did an episode or episodes prior to this on allergies and that was a multi-part episode and you know I thought honestly when I got to asthma it would be a shorter series but it's actually shaping up to be an even longer one and part of it may be that asthma and allergies they are in many ways um, linked at times um, unless you have an asthma that doesn't get brought on by an an allergic reaction to something, but there really is a lot to know and understand about asthma, the different types of asthma, and mainly too about how to live with asthma. And I know that with the conditions that I have, sometimes it comes down to education as well. So in this case, we're educating ourselves, but we can also then you know, try to educate others who may not understand about it. So before I do begin though, I do just want to say that I am in no way a medical, insurance, or legal expert. If you do have any questions in any of those areas, please make sure that you contact a specialist in that field. Um, what I usually do is I discuss topics or articles that I found on publicly accessible means, usually the internet and any opinion discussed is based on my own personal experiences and my understanding of that particular topic and how it pertains to my life with my illness. It is not meant to and should not be used in the place of any medical advice. But like I said before, I just want to try to lend a voice to those who you know, maybe are coming into their understanding of their illness or you know, at this time, especially with the pandemic that we've had over the past year and a half, and now, you know, the different variants that that's coming out, to just let people know that you're not alone. And even if you may not have the exact same type of asthma or even the same illness, there are people out there who understand, who are facing obstacles and are there to lend an ear. Um, you know, just before we get to the end of the podcast as well, you know, if you go online, um, a lot of times you can find support groups um, for your particular illness. Um, There may even be ways that you can find a support group in your area. Um, Now, the primary illness that I have, um, it's pretty rare, so there's no one, I don't believe, in my state, possibly one who does have it. Um, I'm not sure if that one was living in the state or has moved but it's not like I have someone close by that I can discuss it with. It also limits my choices of, you know, the doctors that I see and the specialists. So I really found a lot of support on the online group and a lot of the people on the group say the same thing because they're in a similar situation. So um, just to kind of put that out there, you know, as you know, we've started to get back into normal, but then, you know, with the variant, I know that it's been stressful for me. Um, So I'm sure a lot of people are feeling that as well. So just, you know, reach out, check out some support groups online. And, you know, like I said, even if they don't go through the exact same situation, they can empathize and can lend you an ear. So the next few episodes on asthma, I anticipate that they may be a little bit longer. Um, We'll be going over what it's like to travel with asthma and allergies, as well as helping students in school. 
um, who may have allergies. And also, you know, I, I'm still corresponding with someone that I can try to have a conversation with and ask some questions. Um, I do have some questions written down, but at the same time, it's always nice to talk to someone in case, you know, questions come up after they've answered a question. And I know with me, um, I'll, I'd usually be asking questions once they gave a, a response to something. So I'm looking at at least probably three more episodes on asthma after today. Um, now, we do anticipate that my father, who's been in the hospital, will be coming home tomorrow. Um, that would be Tuesday, July 27th. So depending on how things go, I may or may not need to be um, skipping some episodes or I may try to record ahead. Um, just depends, you know, again, on what's going on there. But if, you know, I'm not going to be recording next week or the week after, I'll make sure to update the Facebook page and all of that will be linked in the description, as well as links to anything that I've used will be in the description. So what we'll be going over today, though, is asthma during pregnancy. So starting with asthma during pregnancy, I know a big concern, um, not only about managing the illness, but also about the medication that you may need to take um, while you're pregnant, how that may or may not affect the unborn child. So one thing to consider when you're pregnant is there can be a change in the severity of your asthma episodes. Um, about one third is the statistics um, you know, that I found on the living with asthma and allergies um, portion of the website I've been using. So, you know, that is a, you know, about a 33% chance that the asthma symptoms will increase in, you know, as well as how strong they are. Um, now, you know, a number of other people say that they stay the same, but then a third actually say that it lessens, the severity lessens. So as with about any other illness, whether it's during pregnancy or not, each person can have their own reaction or level of severity in reactions to different things. So, you know, on the onset, there's no way to really determine which third you're going to be into. Now, the, the good news if you do have more severe asthma while you're pregnant, a lot of the women usually go back to the severity they were at before the pregnancy after they've had their child. It usually takes about three months. And I know I mentioned that um, you know, I was using a specific website. Um, it's the same website of the person that I'm looking at doing some questions with. It's the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America and they have amazing information. So it's a really good resource. Now um, if you have, you know, during a first pregnancy, whether your symptoms lessen, stay the same, or get more severe, usually it will stay the same with each pregnancy. But again, you never know how you may react, but a lot of women say that it stays the same as their first pregnancy within their second. So if your symptoms lessened, then with most women, in your second pregnancy, it will lessen as well. And same thing with severity. It's very important that you keep in touch with your allergist or asthma doctor. Um, that way they can stay on top of your medication, of uh, making sure there's any adjustments, um, and make sure that your obstetrician keeps in touch with your doctor. You know, it's a, it's a team effort and you know, I've been there where I've had to have multiple people when I was pregnant. Um, I will say my second pregnancy went much, much easier. Um, but my first pregnancy, you know, I really had a team of doctors that were corresponding with each other. And I was lucky that I lived near one of the best hospitals in, you know, in the whole area. Um, so my first pregnancy again didn't go great but with my second pregnancy maybe it was because i knew what to expect as well it just seemed to go a little bit easier 
um, my doctors then knew what to expect as well too. Even though I moved down to a different part of the state, my current doctor still got information from my previous one. So um, like I said, it's a team effort as far as making sure all commun communication stays open. Now, as I get a little bit more into the topic, I just do want to emphasize again that I am not a medical expert. I'm just, you know, providing my experiences, such as what I had with my pregnancy, um, you know, to others who may be going through something similar. Um, but again, as each person is different, please make sure um, that you're reaching out individually to someone in that field. But what I am reviewing is um, available on the websites that I will be linking. Now, um, with asthma, your first thought is probably how can this um, possibly affect my unborn child? A way to remember that is your baby gets oxygen from you. So if you're having difficulty breathing, that can limit the amount of oxygen. So that's why it's so important to let the doctor know immediately of any changes, any worsening in symptoms, anything. Um, so you want to make sure you know, that it's a constant contact because without having a sufficient supply of oxygen, it does decrease oxygen to the unborn child's blood. That can, you know, um, limit growth. Um, you know, a baby, whether it's been born or not, does need a constant supply um, of oxygen just as we do. So that doesn't change. Um, so there have been studies that show that a lot of women with asthma have a small increased risk of early labor. Um, to, to give you an idea though, um, my labor or my child was considered a preemie or early um, because he was born three weeks and half a day before his due date. If he had been born maybe about, um, I guess I'm just gonna round up and say 12 hours later, he would not have been considered a preemie. And even though I did have some breathing difficulties at the time, I, and I had not been actually diagnosed with asthma, um, you know, still everything was fine. He had a good birth weight. Um, also, they found that a lot of women with asthma may experience a high, high blood pressure during pregnancy. Yep, I had that too. Um, so another reason to keep in constant contact with your doctor and also low birth weight, weight, which in one way makes sense if, you know, is a possibility of going into labor early, then the birth weight, of course, might be less. So, um, you know, with mine, because it was really not even one day, he was, you know, still considered a good birth weight. And low birth weight is considered anything less than five pounds, eight ounces. And mine definitely met that. <laughs> now, um, what are some things and habits that um, you can do to you know, try to control your asthma? Now, I'm not sure if you're hearing that ding, um, but I'm getting notifications up on my screen and all I could read was a woman who didn't know that she was pregnant and then a couple things and then a Delta flight. So the kind of interesting that popped up while I'm talking about pregnancy. I'm just gonna take a quick look here just because I find it very coincidental that something about labor comes up while um, I'm talking about it. It says, yes, a woman who did not know she was pregnant gave birth to a baby boy on a Delta Airlines flight that just so happened to be carrying her own personal medical team. I will definitely need to take a look at that when we're done. Um, and I know sometimes it's hard to believe that people don't know they're pregnant, but I, I did go to school with someone. His mother didn't know that she was pregnant with him until she went into labor. So, 
you know, as she told it, she was very believable. So I, it can happen. Um, but again, just I found that coincidental that that came up just as I'm recording. Um, so how to try to control your asthma and avoid asthma attacks while you're pregnant. So of course, you know yourself better than anyone else. So whatever triggers you have, you should try your best to avoid them. And it not only goes to when you're pregnant, but really anytime. Um, if you, you know, are near someone who's sick, they have some type of, you know, respiratory um, illness, like a respiratory infection, you know, please make sure that you do your best to avoid contact um, so that you don't get that infection and stay away from allergens um, that you know that you have. Now, whether or not you have asthma, again, it's very important to, you know, stop smoking. So whether you have asthma or don't have asthma, you know, please try to quit smoking. Um, I did have a friend who smoked very um, frequently, pretty much didn't change anything during her pregnancy. And she was due a couple of months after I was. And while... Um, I think it was just before I was going to have my child, she went into labor. So I, I went up and saw her, and then actually I had the baby very shortly after that, and their baby was extremely small. Um, she was still in the hospital when I had my son um, because, you know, the, the father, we're all friends, he came up to visit me while um, I think they had taken the baby to do some tests so he came up and just to see how I was doing but again she was due you know well after I was and you know cutest little baby but she was very very tiny so it you know the way I looked at it um, because I I didn't really smoke a lot I just smoked because a lot of my friends smoked so if I saw them you know, it was more social is what I believe they call it. So, you know, my thought was my, my baby doesn't have any control over whether I smoke. He doesn't have a say in this. And, you know, I'm not going to keep smoking because it's not his fault um, that, you know, I'm using up some of his oxygen basically to smoke. So, you know, I, stayed away from people when they were smoking. My husband smoked, um, which, you know, more than 10 years after he promised to stop smoking, he finally did, um, almost two years now. Um, also, kind of a side note, my brother and sister-in-law have gone, I believe, almost two months without smoking. And my brother was a very heavy smoker for years. So you can do it. Um, I know it might be difficult, but trust me it will be well worth it and I didn't realize how much I missed just that social smoking until you know after I had my son I kept saying oh, I can't wait to get out of here I'm gonna have a cigarette because you know it was a no smoking campus I couldn't even go out to um, to smoke I did have to stay in there a little bit longer because I didn't did develop an infection and, you know, so like after the end of two weeks, because it was almost two weeks, I realized I didn't need the cigarette. By the time I got out of the hospital, I had no urge. It had worked its way through me. Um, and, you know, even though I really would have wanted to avoid that infection, of course, it did help me get over that hurdle of wanting to get a cigarette again. Um, as far as exercise go goes, um, again, make sure you talk to your doctor. They know you. Um, they may tell you which exercises are, you know, good for you, what to avoid. I did see a notation that, you know, swimming is really good um, when you have asthma. Um, you know, it's, I know I've always been told it's a less stressful sport because, you know, you're in the water. Um, it doesn't feel like you have to use as much energy to move. So, 
you know, talk to your doctor about that, especially if you want to stay active. Now, your medicine, which is a very big concern um, when you're pregnant. Um, I know I went through it as well. That, you know, make sure, I know I keep saying talk to your doctor, but I cannot emphasize it enough because they know you, you know you, you need to keep that line of communication open and keep it open with not only your, your OB, but your pulmonologist or allergist, whoever really controls your, your asthma. So you know, sometimes the doctors may you know, have to look at different things, whether it's lessening or um, decreasing your dosage. Um, they may look at using a combination of different medicines. So, you know, as we're more into the very detailed medically um, specific information, I'm not going to go really too far into that other than, um, you know, to, to keep saying you really do need to speak with your doctor. Um, now, previously, um, I know I'd mentioned different types of action plans, like if you have a child, things like that. Um, make sure that you talk to your doctor about a plan. What this means is make sure you know if you have other children, who they're going to go to if you have um, an emergency, make sure you talk to your doctor about what's acceptable during your pregnancy and where you need to go if, um, you know, if you're having certain symptoms. So what this um, or what an asthma action plan does, um, because there is a um, printout that you can make um, from the website, is I would make copies too. It has all of your information on it, your doctor's information, emergency contacts, um, and then you can write down certain spe um, specific information about your asthma, like what medicine do you use, um, the dosage, and then um, just things that you can look at to say, okay, now I'm at a point where I think I really need to go to my doctor, where you can look at other things and say, okay, you know, I'm not really, you know, this is not really working for me or I need to see my doctor immediately. So it gives you um, symptoms where it's like, okay, call your doctor or, you know, you're really getting close to um, you know, needing to speak with your doctor. So it gives you different symptoms and signs. So um, it has areas where you can write down the time so that when you do talk to your doctor, you know, um, exactly when it was happening and you can also make note of what medicine you were taking at the time. So like I said, I would actually you know, go ahead and make a copy of that for you to have on hand. I keep um, not an asthma action plan, but it's an action plan for everything since I do have a couple of different conditions. So it gives all of that information anyway. So just a suggestion to keep it available um, as far as the action plan, keep a list of all your medications. Mine is stuck to my refrigerator door. Um, <laughs> it's just that way if I ever need it, it's right there. Um, now, you may get allergy shots um, on a regular basis. So you may be asking, okay, during pregnancy, is, um, you know, is that a, a time where I can continue those shots? Normally, um, you know, normally it's not an issue. You know, if you if you have reactions to things where you need to be taking an allergy medication, then you know it's it's best to continue that if it's possible. But you know, talk to your allergist. They might say, okay, we may want to change the dosage or play with um, certain things and discuss it with you more to go through the safest options. Um, flu shots. Now, um, if you've listened to previous episodes, I actually shared some very nice, exciting information in that I've been cleared to get the flu shot, which I had not been previously. So very excited about that. Um, just because I did live with a lot of anxiety about getting the flu um, when I was pregnant, I'm allergic to the measles, mumps, rubella shot, which actually I may need to speak with my allergist to see if I can 
go ahead and take that now too. Um, but I was concerned about, you know, those who may not have gotten the vaccine yet, um, possibly others who could not get the vaccine like myself, and, you know, just the possibilities of me getting severely ill while I was pregnant. And I dealt a lot with the public, so of course that increased my chances. So when it comes to getting a flu shot, the recommendation is yes. Um, flu can actually be worse in pregnant women than those who are not. So that just really is a further incentive um, to get that if you are able. Now, something really important, but which you hope does not happen while you're um, you know, while you're pregnant or especially during labor, um, usually if your asthma is under complete control, then it's a very, very, very rare possibility that you would actually go into an attack during labor. So um, normally too, any of the breathing techniques um, that you may use, I don't know the term Lamaze or Lamaze is actually still um, taught, but there are breathing techniques that I know a lot of women use. So in most cases, those are also able to be used. Now, something that was important to me and which I did have to discuss with my doctors is about how safe it is to breastfeed, you know, afterwards and how any medication might have an impact to that. So the medications that you take um, during pregnancy and after pregnancy, a concern would be whether or not those are safe for the baby. And if you're nursing, you know, will those medicines get into the milk? Um, overall, it's not believed to be harmful um, when you're nursing, but you know, it's not really been a subject that's fully studied, which to me is very odd because there are a, in my opinion, a large number of women who really need to know this. Um, looking at my first, no, actually my first and my second pregnancy, I was on high blood pressure medication, which, you know, that's one of the issues that may um, be prevalent or may arise during pregnancy. So, you know, I had a conversation with a doctor, with a lactation consultant, all about um, whether or not this one medication would be safe while I was nursing. Um, and primarily it was, but a small percentage of children could have a reaction. Now it was like really infinitesimal, but I did not want to take that chance. So very important, um, talk to your doctor, your, your doctor about the medication. So speak which, with which, I'm very sorry, I'm having trouble speaking today. Um, whichever doctor um, that has prescribed the prescription, make sure you speak with them as well as, instead of your obstetrician at that time, speak to the pediatrician. Um, you know, that's just a way that you're covering all of the bases and trying to, you know, protect yourself and the baby as well as, you know, being able to have that bond that you can get while nursing. Now, just overall to remember, if you do choose to nurse, that um, you can become dehydrated very easily. So make sure that you are drinking lots of extra liquid. And you know, going on forward now that the baby has been born, um, you know, something that we've discussed a little bit previously is, you know, is asthma genetic or hereditary? Um, it can definitely be a factor. So, if you have asthma, it is more likely that your child could have asthma compared to a child who does not have asthma in the family background. Um, now, this is um, something that I've experienced from a family member um, that the environment you're living with can also play a role. So, you know, whether or not you have a lot of mold or pollen near where you live, um, the 
issue that I was speaking of is the family member was renting a home. They didn't know it had you know, some black mold in it. And you know, no, what happened is her son did end up developing asthma. It may or may not have been linked to that, but you know, she does tend to feel that it was um, related to that incident. So with all of this being said now, um, you may then ask, what can you do to prevent asthma um, from your baby, from developing in your child? We've already spoke about one, and that was the smoking. There are some other factors that um, may play a, a cause in um, your child developing asthma, and some of those are maternal stress, the diet that you eat, your vitamin D levels, um, antibiotic use, and even how you delivered your child. So make sure that, again, you speak with your doctor, but these are things to look out for so that when you do speak with your doctor, you can ask these specific questions. Because um, I know I say, talk to your doctor a lot. And I'm, you know I do, again, want to emphasize I am not a medical expert, but if you're keeping an eye on any of these things or any of these areas concern you, um, this can just help you know kind of point you in a direction of questions that you want to ask. Now, originally, I thought that you know I would be able to go through both the asthma and allergies um, being disabilities as well, but um, this episode went a little bit longer than I expected, so I'll probably just go on back and add a little proviso at the beginning of the recording. Um, so thank you for understanding. Um, I. I tend to sometimes elaborate a lot, which that's just me. Um, <laughs> that's why I said to um, the person I'm corresponding with um, from this foundation that, you know, at some point I think it's probably just best that we speak instead of trying to go back and forth by email. But like I said too, it's also a topic that I didn't think there would be this much information on. and. You know, it's actually very interesting and it's taught me a lot. You know, in a lot of ways, I you know, wish that my pulmonologist and allergist had gone through a lot of these things with me. You know, I really didn't understand what was part of my asthma and what wasn't. Um, now, one of my doctors has actually left the practice, so I've had to reschedule to see someone in that practice again. So. I can definitely ask some of these questions at that time. So um, if you do want to contact me in any way about ideas for any upcoming episodes, I am looking at you know, going over migraines as well um, as someone who rarely gets them, thankfully. I know when they start to come on is this feeling of dread. So I know for a lot of people it's a very important topic and not only for yourself, but for your family, your support system, those around you to understand that a migraine is just more than a headache. And that taking a couple, you know, NSAIDs or acetaminophen is not just going to do it. So we'll be working on those episodes. If you have a suggestion, going on to my Facebook page is probably the quickest way of getting in touch with me. Um, I will leave my email as well. All of this will be in the um, description of the podcast. So, um, again, I appreciate everybody hanging in there. Um, thank you so much for continuing to listen. If um, you can do me a favor, though, if you think that the content that I'm creating is something that you think others might be interested in hearing, please share the podcast with your friends. Um, you know, if you're in or if you're using a podcatcher that allows you to like or leave comments, that helps the algorithms look things up and decide, you know, where I come up in the search engines. I'm not a computer person, so I just know there's some algorithm that picks all of that out. So I would really appreciate that. 
Um, and I hope everyone has a gr great week, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.